and welcome back to the Morning Blend, where it's time for Ryan J Reviews. And Ryan, of course, is a nationally syndicated film critic, and we love having him here because he tells us what we should see, rent, or skip. Right, Ryan? That's my job. Yes, it is, and we like how you do it. Thank Take you for being it here. seriously. <laughs> I Incredibly. like that. All right, this, um, oh, I was going to get right into G.I. Joe, but we're going to actually talk about the host first. Yes. Yes. Right? This yeah. is from the people who wrote Twilight. It's from Stephanie Meyer, same author as the Twilight series, and this is her new novel, or new-ish novel, and it's also for the same kind of target audience, young adult, and it's science fiction, it's not vampiric romance, and it's not as good as Twilight, it's a little bit uh, cliche when it comes to the science fiction, you know, it's just kind of like asymmetrical clothing, and dystopian future, and shiny cars, and I like the lead actress, it's, uh, her name is Saoirse Ronan. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Have you ever, it, it looks, like, it looks like Schwarzy. Saoirse. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. But she's a little girl from Lovely Bones and from Hannah. Okay. And she's, yeah, she's a really great young actress. And she plays basically a character who's human, but whose body is overtaken by an alien. And she's fighting within her mind. And she's in love with two different men. Like, she herself is in love with one guy. And the alien that took over her body is in love with another guy. So there's like a love triangle, love quadrangle going on. Mm. That part of the movie I liked, but the rest of it is kind of cliche and boring. So it's a rental. So it's not <laughs> scary. It's just more alien-esque. Right. It's PG-13. And they're trying to go after the like the twi hard audience mm -hmm. but i don't think it's as good twi as hard yeah you always make up words well no that's a that's pop that's their, a pop culture that's term that's their group oh, yeah, it is? The, the oh big, yeah they're twi hards mm -hmm. they're twi hards uh -huh. okay the big twi <laughs> the die hard twilight fans <laughs> twi hards is it going to be a franchise like that i mean are there going to be host hards <laughs> they're hoping they're ho <laughs> they're hoping that's a terrible terrible it fan is. word oh, right no. <laughs> host geeks maybe that's yeah, good. there we go but um it's uh, they're hoping but i don't think it's going to do that well to warrant a sequel, so we'll see. Okay, let's get to GI Joe retaliation because we got to see us some abs here. Um, it, Barely, really. And if, you, if you're expecting Channing Tatum abs, none of it. Is oh. this as disappointing yeah. as Magic Mike was? Worse. I liked <laughs> oh, Magic no. Mike better. Here's the problem with this movie. It's it's a sequel, number one, mm -hmm. and that's okay. hard to do to begin with. And Channing Tatum and Bruce Willis are billed as headliners, and they're both in the film for about 10 minutes long. No way. Yeah, and so it's really Dwayne Johnson's film, and I love Dwayne Johnson, but I prefer him when he breaks stereotype and works against you know form and does okay. like family films. Here he's just kind of a tough guy, and that's not very impressive, and the movie's very confusing. The story's all over the place. Some of the action scenes are good, but the sound editing is so awful that you can't even hear the dialogue that's taking place. No way! Just the, the, the sounds are so loud, the yeah, explosions. It's, and right. There is one 10 minute action sequence on the side of a mountain that's so dynamic and amazing, and the 3D is good in that sequence that that's almost worth the price of admission alone. But I can't recommend seeing an entire movie just for a good 10 minute scene. Right. Did you like the first one? I didn't see the first one. Okay. I was so. I'm like, look, it's like. Barbie, Barbie goes to war, right? It's like Ken, Ken's answer. <laughs> Ken's GI Joe, isn't it like Hasbro's answer to Ken yeah. the Ken doll, basically? And I was just not buying it, so I didn't grow it up. It seems with like every movie's in 3D now. This one's in 3D too, the right? Big, yeah, the big blockbusters, the action movies, they try to go for the 3D, but this is not the most dynamic 3D. You can there are a couple scenes that are good, but seriously, I'm not recommending this movie. That's it's, wild. It's pretty boring. All right, what about Family Weekend? Is that a movie you'd recommend? Uh, partially. I like the cast. It's a little bit <laughs> awkward. Picky. This week. It's, yeah. it's a tough week. It's not a great week. It's um, the beginning of this movie season. But we just had some really, I mean, Oz the Great and Powerful still playing. Olympus Has Fallen still playing. Some really good Saw movies. Saw that. You, One of my new favorite movies right, ever. Right, Olympus Has Fallen. Amazing. Okay. See it. Great okay. action movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, Family Weekend is fun. It stars Kristen Chenoweth, who I love. She originated the role of Glinda in Wicked on Broadway. And uh, Matthew Modine plays her husband. And the little girl is Joey King, who was the voice of China Girl in Oz the Great and Powerful. Oh. She plays one of the, uh, the younger daughter. And basically, Basically, it's about a kid who kidnaps this, this girl who kidnaps her parents, ties them up, and tries to get them to be more compassionate and attentive once again because <laughs> they become very selfish and self-possessed. It looks funny. It's I like cute. the idea. Here's what's weird about it. It's rated R. And there's oh. nothing R-rated to me about it. I thought it should have been PG or PG-13. I don't remember any swearing or any uh, nudity or anything. So it's very awkward. And it's edited kind of weird. It's kind of B-movie-ish. Mm -hmm. It's coming to iTunes on April 23rd. So I'd say wait, rent it around then okay. and see it. But it's, it's in select theaters starting today. Okay. Right. And you've got a Blu-ray that you want to chat about. Yes. New on Blu-ray, old movie, new on Blu-ray. This is Easter Parade, and uh, it's one of my favorite Judy Garland movies after The Wizard of Oz. Co-stars Fred Astaire, and one of the best things about it is the commentary, the uh, narration track on the film is voiced by uh, John Fricke, 
who's who friend to the morning blend, mm -hmm. who yeah. we saw recently at my, there we are all together at my uh, Oz party. Mm -hmm. And he, along with Fred Astaire's daughter, Ava Astaire McKenzie, did the commentary track. And they tell so many amazing stories about like behind the scenes and things, how the story changed throughout the script and casting that almost happened and didn't happen. I love all that behind the scenes gossip. And it's a great Judy Garland film. So it's a great Easter movie too. So okay. perfect, perfect timing. I, like I want to see that. I love Should. hearing her sing. Oh, who's nobody's better? Oh. I mean, yeah, it's seriously, it's just like, it's like, I was going to say music to your ears. It is. <laughs> it's good to Literally. revisit. Yeah, and it's nice <laughs> to revisit classics around holidays. Definitely. And share with the family. All right, well, we love when you come here, and you can like Ryan J on Facebook. Too bad there wasn't a love button there, but you can follow him on Twitter, and for his full movie reviews, check out his website, ryanjreviews.com.